Yes, I was asking that staphylococci and streptococci are they aerobic organisms? Aerobic organisms or facultative anaerobic or facultative anaerobic? Yes, this is some people. So you say this is aerobic organism and the other doctor is saying it is facultative anaerobe. So what do you think? Do you think it is facultative anaerobe? Right. Okay, let, let me tell you what it is really. Just a minute. Actually, staphyloco aerobic organism aerobic bacteria they are very metabolically advanced bacteria they are able to utilize oxygen during their energy metabolism right and those organisms which can run energy metabolism in such a way that they can utilize oxygen right we call them aerobic organism but staphylococci and streptococci have double action if oxygen is available if oxygen is available, these organisms will run aerobic metabolism because in the presence of oxygen, when you break down macromolecule to produce energy, more ATP is produced. So aerobic energy metabolism is more efficient, more efficient. But when we talk about anaerobic organisms, what or anaerobic metabolism in anaerobic metabolism when you break the macromolecules to produce the energy you are partially breaking down the macromolecules and very little ATP is produced and in anaerobic metabolism you do not use oxygen as a final electron acceptor right you use other uh, organic sometimes acids like pyruvic acid, lactic, lactic, lactic acid or you can use sulfide or you can use sulfate but what you need to remember that in anaerobic bacterial metabolism during energy product, production electrons are not accepted by oxygen. Final electron acceptor is other than oxygen that produces less energy and that is a primitive metabolism staphylococcus and streptococcus have both capacities what i mean by both capacities that if oxygen is available they will run more efficient aerobic metabolism but if oxygen is not available they will switch to anaerobic metabolism that is why we say that these organisms are aerobic when oxygen is available and if the oxygen is not available, they have a faculty, they have a faculty or capacity to switch to the anaerobic metabolism, right? So what I want to say that Staphylococcus and Streptococci, they can be considered aerobic organism in the presence of oxygen and they can be converted, can be considered facultative anaerobic organism when oxygen is less and they can switch their metabolism from aerobic to anaerobic again but as i mentioned previously that metronidazole can only work convert into from pro drug to active drug only in the absence of oxygen right so if someone has mixed infection for example in above the diaphragm you are having lot a uh, pleuropulmonary infection which has lot of anaerobic bacteria but there are chances it has some streptococci also then metronidazole will not work is that right and above the diaphragm if there are anaerobic infections and you really want to use what you really want to use metronidazole then you have to use metronidazole in combination with some other drug also right this is one thing second thing which is important sometimes this question is asked okay clindamycin is preferred above the diaphragm in anaerobic infections and metronidazole is preferred below the diaphragm is that right in anaerobic infection 
is there any drug or group of drug which can be used in all anaerobic infections it doesn't matter they are above the diaphragm or below the diaphragm okay so doctor is saying that if infection is above or below the diaphragm regardless of that if we use penicillins or cephalosporins they can be effective answer is no penicillins cephalosporins and put a big cross penicillins and cephalosporins are now presently not effective or very effective for anaerobic infections either above or below the diaphragm what could be the reason the reason is almost 70 percent almost 70 percent of the anaerobic bacteria produce yes beta lactamases almost 70 percent of anaerobic bacteria produce beta lactamases it means they are producing penicillinases or cephalosporinases it means the most of the most of the majority of the anaerobic organisms produce such enzymes which can break down the beta lactam ring of penicillin or cephalosporins so penicillin and cephalosporins as such are not effective in anaerobic infections but but if with penicillin and cephalosporin you add you add beta lactamase inhibitor then this combination can work why because bacteria will produce beta lactamases right if you give suppose one penicillin or cephalosporin along with beta lactamase inhibitor beta lactamase inhibitor like lavulonic acid or thiazobactam or uh, uh, they are dif different so along with what is this along with penicillin the cephalosporins if you give beta lactamase inhibitor this combination classical combination which is most commonly used is augmentin there is a penicillin with clavulonic acid right now moxicillin and clavulonic acid now this combination can be used in anaerobic infection that's that combination can be used for anaerobic infection above the diaphragm even below the diaphragm of course to the susceptible organism but there i want to tell you one thing some resistant staphylococci which we will discuss in detail later we call them these staphylococci we call them mrsa methicillin resistant staphylococcus aureus right these are very dangerous because they are resistant to they are resistant to broad spectrum penicillins and also they are resistant to when penicillins are given along with beta lactamases we'll discuss in detail this type of superbug later why it is so but what i want to tell you that in mrsa methicillin resistant staphylococcus aureus or in case of MRSA right actually penicillin binding proteins are altered so when penicillins or beta lactam antibiotics you give they do not bind with their targets on the cell walls of the methicillin resistant staphylococcus aureus and penicillins or cephalosporins or beta lactam antibiotics fail there there in some strains of MRSA, we can use clindamycin. So, what I'm trying to say that clindamycin can be used in staphylococcal and streptococcal infections in those strains which produce toxic shock syndrome toxin because clindamycin inhibits the protein synthesis and it inhibits the production of production of toxins plus if there are staphylococci which are methicillin resistant staphylococcus aureus 
we discuss we will discuss in detail there will be full lecture on this bug right but for a while i will just say in this organism penicillin binding proteins are altered in such a way that penicillin the cephalosporin cannot bind with target right and if they don't bind with target they don't work in these cases clindamycin in some of these cases clindamycin can be used because clindamycin will go inside the staphylococcus aureus and work on what work on ribosomes to inhibit the protein synthesis right so these were few things which i wanted to tell you let's recap it number 1 metronidazole is strictly limited to the anaerobic infections number 1 number 2 and metronidazole is preferably used below the diaphragm as above the diaphragm in mixed anaerobic infections aerobic organisms are also there when metronidazole fail and if you have to use the metronidazole in anaerobic infections above the diaphragm then you have to give it with some other combination right this is one thing clindamycin yes above the diaphragm we use it but there is one condition where clindamycin is not used that is when you have mixed anaerobic and aerobic infection in central nervous system if someone has a brain abscess you don't use clindamycin you know why because clindamycin does not cross blood brain barrier because clindamycin does not cross the blood brain barrier so it fails in the infections in central nervous system in that case if the anaerobic infections along with aerobic you will use metronidazole which can cross the blood brain barrier and of course with in combination with other drugs which will cover the those organism which are not susceptible to metronidazole is that right so then we talked about that if we talk about a group of antibiotics which can be used in anaerobic infection regardless of above or below the diaphragm answer is not penicillin not cephalosporins as most of the majority of the almost 70% of the anaerobic organism produce beta lactamase so beta lactam antibiotics fail if you really want to use beta beta lactam antibiotics then you should use it in combination with beta lactamase inhibitor for example in orodental infections one of the very first line drug is augmentin right but if in orodental infections if you have to use metronidazole you have to use in combination with some other drug as well right so then i come to another question to you above the diaphragm clindamycin preferred below the diaphragm metronidazole preferred above and below regardless combination of beta lactam antibiotics like penicillin to cephalosporin with beta lactamase inhibitors is there any other class of drug which can be used for anaerobic infections regardless of wherever these infections are present in our body yes again my question is above the diaphragm we prefer clindamycin in anaerobic infections below the diaphragm usually we prefer metronidazole above and below the diaphragm beta lactam antibiotics plus beta lactam mazes penicillin cephalosporin plus beta lactamase inhibitors plus beta lactamase inhibitors but there is one group which is really very effective right and regardless of these anaerobic mixed infections are above or below in almost 95% of the cases those are, those drugs are very very effective that group is 